Faith Fulfilled, Book 1, Chapter 11. See you later, bite-sized. Six days was all that went by, but it seemed like it was six years. Normally, Clyde and Mike have an urge to go out and explore, but they didn't feel anything this time. Nothing. The eve of their departure had arrived. So how are we going to tell them? I don't really know. I didn't think that far ahead. Well, we can always tell them we're just going on another adventure. Yes, but we're usually back within a few days. Who knows when, or if, we're coming back. Both men stood puzzling, Clyde scratching his head, and Mike rubbing his chin. I think we just have to tell them a partial truth, Mike said, turning to Clyde. What do you mean? We tell them that there's a great threat, and we have to face it. But we don't have to tell them that it's the legacy holders, or that I myself am a legacy holder. Good plan. We need to make it clear that we're going to be gone for a long time, and that we may never come back. Yeah. What's this I see? You getting nervous? Of course I am. We're going after the legacy holders. They have the power to wipe out entire villages with a finger. You forget, Clyde. I'm a legacy holder too. And so is Ray. I guess. But what if you can't beat them? We will, Clyde. We have to. With that, they exited their home and made their way down to the village below. As they entered, they fought back tears, as they knew this could very well be the last time they see their friends. Hey guys, why the long faces? Hey, can you get Isabella and Frank? There's something we need to discuss. Did Isabella dump you? Clyde gave Lucas a glare, making the point that this was no time for jokes. This was serious. Lucas found them and brought them to the librarian's house. Frank fiddled with the books in the bookshelves as he waited for Mike and Clyde's entrance. They finally did arrive, each with frowns on their faces. What's going on, you guys? Well, me and Clyde are going on a trip, Mike said, rubbing the back of his head. That's why you brought us here? You guys go on adventures all the time! Easy, Isabella. They have something important to say. What? Could he already know about where we're going? Clyde thought to himself. It's come to our attention that there is a large threat, and Clyde and I are going to be going after it. We... we don't know for how long we'll be gone, or if we'll ever return. Well, that's nothing new. You guys go on life-threatening journeys almost every day. Isabella, we're... Clyde reaches out to Isabella, but she slaps his hand away. All you two do is go on daring adventures and risking your lives. And for what? To give everyone that cares about you heart attacks? Isabella chokes out tears starting to fall. Isabella, you just need to understand that these boys aren't bound to this village. If they wish to risk their lives to seek adventure, you can't keep them grounded here. Frank says, bringing his crying daughter into his arms. I, I don't want them to leave again. I don't think my heart can take another goodbye thinking it might be the last. Isabella mutters sobbing into her father's chest. Then let's not say goodbye. Clyde speaks suddenly. Isabella sniffles and turns to face him. What do you mean? How about a see you later? That way you'll know we'll see each other again. But what about us, Clyde? Huh? What about the promises we made? Do your stupid adventures mean more to you than me? Isabella's entire mood changed. She was furious and the fire in her eyes showed no sign of dimming, jabbing her finger into Clyde's chest with each and every word. I, I... Clyde starts to stutter out, but Frank places his hand on Isabella's shoulder, stopping her. That's enough, Isabella! You're acting like a child! But... But nothing! I know why Mike and Clyde need to leave. They have an important job to do, and yelling at them isn't going to make their going any easier. You know, don't you? Mike speaks up, his gaze at the ground. Everyone's head snaps to him. You think after raising you for so long, you think I wouldn't have noticed you were special? Special? What do you mean, special? Our dear friend Mike... Frank pauses. ...is a legacy holder. The room fell silent. If someone took their sword out, the sound would have sliced right through the air like a knife through butter. No one knew what to say or do. All they could do was stand there and wait for someone else to speak up. How? Isabella mutters, cutting the silence. She was looking at the ground, and her fists were clenching and unclenching. There's no way he 
could be one of those unruly poisonous rats. You know I'm not like that. Do I? Do I know you at all? Isabella glares. How do I know you haven't been fooling us this whole time? How can I trust you when you can't even tell me who you are? Isabella, he isn't tricking us. He's always been the caring, protective guy he was raised to be. I don't want to hear anything from you anymore. Isabella growls out, with fresh tears seeming to form in her still anger-ridden eyes. Nothing you say can make me feel better. Nothing you say will bring me joy like it used to. Isabella, I know this is hard for you to process and understand. I want to stay with you to earn back your trust and show you that even if I now have the title of a legacy holder, that I'm still the same person that helped you take those first steps. I'm still the person that cares about you. But I don't have the time to convince you how I'm still that person. We have to go. I'm sorry things turned out this way. No one in the room moved or said a word. Mike then let out a sigh and started towards the door. The sound of pounding footsteps following after him, and before he can get his hand on the door, he's slightly set off balance by a hug from behind. Just don't die, okay? I mean it. Isabella mutters into Mike's back. I can't make any promises, but I'll try. Isabella lets him go, and Mike turns back to her and pulls her into a proper hug. You guys bring me back a present from your adventure. That way you'll have a reason to come back. Clyde walks over and joins into the group hug. You already are my reason for coming back. What? I'm not getting involved in this? Get over here, old man. And the four of them fall into a big group hug. Frank is the first to pull away. It's time. You two go on. You have a long journey ahead of you. Don't you dare leave us and the world disappointed. Isabella points at their faces. I'll always leave the world disappointed. Clyde jokes, earning a hard smack on his arm from Isabella. I mean it! Okay, okay. Clyde says, putting his hand up in defense. He then leans down and gives her a peck on the cheek. I'll miss you too, bite-sized. I told you to stop calling me that. But it's cute. And making you pout makes you even more adorable. Okay, lovebirds, let's go! Mike says, grabbing Clyde's shoulder, making his farewell salute. Two fingers together against his forehead.